Welcome, I'm Hope Warshaw, Nutrition Section Editor for PresentDiabetes.com. And we're here in Atlanta at the 2009 AADE meeting, and we want to bring you some video snippets of people who are presenting here at the meeting, and you'll get to see them in near real time at home. So I want to first welcome Melinda Marynook, a longtime friend and colleague. Thank you. And um, let's begin, Melinda, with um, telling people a little bit about what you do in the world of diabetes. And I should say that uh, Melinda is probably one of the most well-traveled <laughs> diabetes educators. Well, I guess I should say I'm proud to be I'm celebrating this year my 30th year in diabetes. And uh, I work at Joslin Diabetes Center. My background is as a dietitian and a CDE, but my role as director of clinical and education programs there is to do many different activities outside of Joslin. So our mission in our division is to extend the mission of Joslin in getting better diabetes care to more people. So it involves setting up affiliates in the United States and abroad. Uh, as well as developing materials, programs, a variety of things to get diabetes education out there. So. Great. So what is the program that you're presenting here at AADE? Well, today it's a lot of fun. Um, it's not a high content area of facts and figures, but I've had the opportunity to visit so many different countries that I've pulled some stories together. Uh, I've called the program Diabetes Education Around the World, Exploring New Ideas. Mm -hmm. And my discovery was that educators are doing cool things all over the place. Uh, very sophisticated and they're very simple according to their patient needs. So. Okay, so tell me some of these places <laughs> you've gotten to go to, because <laughs> I'm jealous. Yeah. <laughs> it's been pretty exciting. So um, in Japan, for example, one of the centers that I have worked with, not helping them, their ideas are all their own, I just learned from them, is they combine diabetes education with art and culture and music in a way that I never thought of. So for example, the physician may give a lecture on diabetes using PowerPoint slides, as we've all seen, but in the background, there's a pianist playing to a company and kind of create a very restful atmosphere. And then when the physician takes a break from a lecture, up comes the jazz group and plays a couple sets. They sent me a DVD of it actually, and they're playing Take the A Train. Then the physician comes back up and gives a little bit more lecture. So I find it fascinating. Mm -hmm. They make it very welcoming. The mm -hmm. community comes. I'm like, good for them. Right. Another center has done a great job partnering with an organic farmer down the street who provides them with colorful fruits and vegetables, and they in fact call their program Delicious Colors. So to this try is in to, Japan? This is also in Japan. Mm -hmm. To encourage people to eat a variety of foods while they're cooking it and while they're getting fresh organic produce from a local farmer. So keeping mm -hmm. it very local, which is mm -hmm. really cool. Great. Oh. Good. Um, I might share one other example. Um, in India, I've noticed a couple of creative things. One from the very simple, where a dietitian uses peer counselors mm -hmm. to create a plate method that is appropriate for their culture. Mm -hmm. And she invites the peer counselors for dinner, puts rice on a plate in a mound mm -hmm. that's appropriate with some vegetables, and then they get to go out in the community, the peer mm -hmm. counselors, mm -hmm. and work with the families to say, eat mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. mound of rice on mm -hmm. a banana leaf. Yep. Using our plate would make no sense. Right. But to the sophisticated, yep. the, the uh, physician doing diabetes education, using little mobile films on his mm -hmm. camera, mm -hmm. showing foot care, and then posting it on YouTube mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. sending the link to a patient. So you go from the simple to the sophisticated mm -hmm. in the same country. Yeah. Cool. And I think here at this meeting, we're seeing so much in the area of use of technology. Um, and I just think the internet is going to become such a big feature of how we get to this huge mass of people yeah. who have diabetes, both within the U.S. Absolutely. and in the world. Absolutely. And I'm so thankful because we have actually a Joslin Diabetes Center in uh, Dubai. We have mm -hmm. them in a couple of areas. And um, 
I've been referring them to access online learning resources for the educators to get their continuing education mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're a little bit feeling uh, apart from some of the uh, most current information and I feel comfort mm -hmm. knowing that there's some mm -hmm. great websites in order for them to get CE. Mm -hmm. Do you feel globally that educators are even more open to going online for continuing ed? Absolutely. It's a transition. I think mm -hmm. that their initial reaction is live first, but then when they realize the benefits of being able to replay, go back, listen again, do it at their mm -hmm. own time and convenience, it's really been perfect. So Great. Okay, so I just have one request. Okay. <laughs> when you go to Dubai again, can I come in your suitcase? <laughs> it's hot, but it's fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate your time. Sure.